Father God, we come to you in Jesus' name. I pray that um, that your word, that your your power, that your Holy Spirit would touch our hearts today, in Jesus' name. That that you would be in the middle. That you would be the one who who comes in and helps us, that you would be the one who heals us, the one that restores us, the one that, that breaks every chain. And we just thank you for it, Lord, today, that, that we come with open hearts and we come ready to receive. Um, so how's everybody's new year going so far? You know, let me hear it. Somebody's got to clap about it. We got to clap about it. Anybody doing good this year? Miss Heather just went out. She would have been shouting and screaming. We, we've been praying and believing for this baby that she's pregnant with. Um, and, and what a glorious report, the power of God, the power of prayer, um, God working miracles. And, and she is pregnant. She had an issue with a cyst that was nine centimeters. And, and by the glory of God, with no intervention, the cyst has shrunk to three centimeters meters and we're believing it's just going to go all the way in Jesus name. And so, 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 so far her year is going very well. Um, this is a year of 2023 and, and in the beginning of it, we see already on ESPN, we see a miracle. We see God working in the middle of media that won't allow God in, places where God can't, well, where they say he can't go, they're really not in charge, where they don't want to let him go. Already we see knees bowed, we see hearts turn to God. We see people giving their, their, their heart to Jesus, praying in the middle of, of the broadcast. And, and when I look at that, I just think, wow, what is this going to be a year of? What is this going to be a year of? The other day, um, we were praying at church. Every Tuesday, we have prayer night at church. I want to personally invite you to that. Tuesday nights, six o'clock, we come up here and we pray. We, we have a list of, of, of needs that people have submitted to the church. You are also welcome to, if you have a need that you want to put on that list so that we can pray for you, but we come up here to pray. And it was right after Christmas. And, um, and so, you know, you have all the decorations and all the things going on. And while we were up here, um, Miss Kathy was working, putting Brother Moffitt to work, put this up, put that up. Um, and then I was in the other room and I was trying to take all the Christmas down and, and, um, Brother Moffat just stopped and he said, we need to pray. We need to pray. And he, and he came in there and he said, hey, we need to pray. And my heart was just burning. He was right. We needed to come and we needed to pray. There was so much busyness. All that work was still going to be left there for me to do. It was going to be there that day. It was going to be there the next day. I could have really made some headway. But he was right. We needed to stop and we needed to pray. And my spirit knew that. And, and Miss Kathy, was, was, she was just wanted to get everything down, ready for the new year. Um, but he said, no, we need to pray. And when we came in here to pray, I'm so thankful that I listened to my pastor. I'm so thankful that I listened to the Holy Spirit because he gave me a word in that moment that I decided to pause and pray. If I'd have kept working, I wouldn't have heard that word. I'd have been busy. I'm sure maybe he would have given it to me at another time. But in that moment, he wanted me to pause and to pray and to listen to him. And as I did, he said, this is going to be a year of next steps and transitions, next steps and transitions. And it was just over and over in my heart. It was next steps and transitions. And, you know, we think about transitions. We don't like things to change. We don't like things to be different. It makes you uncomfortable when something changes, when something's different, because you, you're, you're, you know, you know where to land, you know what to do in your comfortable spot. But when things change and they're different, you don't really know what to do with yourself. You know, like Brother Stephen, he rearranged the youth building and, and we had a little party for Miss Kathy's birthday. Um, Miss Kathy turned 70, and, and so we had a little birthday party on Wednesday night, and we celebrated her birthday, but it was, I was awkward in the moment because things were in a different spot, and, and I didn't quite know what to do with myself in that different spot. I didn't know where I landed, where to put things, but if God's telling us 
a year of next steps and transitions, we need to prepare our heart for that. We don't need to put labels on it. We don't need to know, you know, we do have some big things coming up this year. My daughter-in-law is about to have our second grandbaby. And, and my son just got a job at the sheriff's department. Nicholas is fixing to graduate from high school. He's gonna be going to college. Tommy and I are gonna have an empty nest. We're not gonna know what to do with ourselves. What are we gonna do? And, and then I'm getting ordained in April. So, so it is like there are obvious next steps that are coming, but, but preparing our hearts because we don't always know what God means when he tells us something. Preparing our hearts to be obedient to him in the moment when we don't quite know what to do with ourselves. But to know that we can trust him because if he said it to me, that means he's in the middle of it, right? And so we gotta take that time to pray. And I hope that you're doing that with your new year as well. I hope that as you're given opportunity in the room today, um, as, I, as I give you opportunity to come and pray at the end, that you'll take a little opportunity to ask God, what is it that you want me to do? And, and, and we should always stop to pray. We should always stop to pray. Um, as we start the service this morning, I've got a scripture that I'm going to keep up on the, on the board the whole time during service, and I want you to think on it. I want you to write it on your heart. I want you maybe highlight it in your Bible, um, save it on your app, whatever it is that you do for your, um, for your Bible, and it is 2 Corinthians 3, 17. For the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Who needs some freedom this year? Anybody need some freedom? You need to be set free from something? Who's looking for freedom? You know, we've got chains up here that are a little temperamental and very heavy, but, but, but who's looking for some freedom? Who feels like they've been held captive for far too long? You know, there, there are... Um, things that we deal with in our lives. And as we're looking at our new year, you know, we set maybe some, some resolutions, some goals. We, there's things that we want to do. The gyms are full right now. People are at the gym. They are going to lose this weight that they need to lose. People are, you know, I saw this meme on Facebook that everybody kept sharing and posting, and it was 2023. I'm folding my clothes as soon as they come out of the dryer. Well, I have yet to do that. <laughs> but it's a goal. You know, everybody was going to do it. And I wonder how many people actually did it. You know, everybody was posting. They were putting their foot down. They were folding their clothes as soon as they came out of the dryer. And, and I just don't believe it. I don't believe that they're actually doing it. Maybe they are. Maybe you're that person that does that. But I'm not. And so, so other things. Maybe you're, you're budgeting. You're hardcore budgeting. You're going to get your finances in order this year. Maybe you're going to floss every day like you're supposed to and your dentist is going to be so proud. Okay, running the race that set before you. You know, the last time that I preached, I talked about building a boat, right? And, and I talked about Noah and, and building a boat and being obedient to God in the middle of whatever it is that he's calling you to do. Even if it sounds crazy, even if it seems crazy, even if it's an uncomfortable transition, you know, will you be obedient to God in the middle of that? Will you put the work in? Will you do the hard things? Will you trust the Lord in the middle of that? Um, and for some of us, it's day 15 of the new year and we've already given up, right? Like, I definitely haven't folded my clothes every day. I walked one time. I went on one walk. It was a good walk, but, but at one walk, you know, but I'm not, let's see, is that better? Y'all, this is a new microphone we're testing out, and we're having a hard time here. <laughs> Sorry. I've been watching it. I knew it was going to happen. Okay. All right. We're testing things. All right. So new year, new microphone. All right. But however you decide to approach your new year, this new year, I just want to say to you with the utmost respect and, and all of the love in my heart that, um, oh, this is weird, Stephen. I may have to. <laughs> okay. All right. With the utmost respect and all of the love in my heart that in 2023, we all need to lose a little weight. That is not what you came to church to hear today, right? <laughs> we all need to lose a little weight. And some of y'all might be thinking, not everybody needs to lose weight. I mean, Shane will just blow away in the wind if he loses any weight. <laughs> 
But that's not the kind of weight that I'm talking about here. Um, The weight that we carry around with us. The things that, you know, visibly you can see this weight right here. You know, I've got this weight and, and it's very heavy. And you're carrying this stuff around with you. You know, maybe it's, it's worries about those finances. Maybe it is um, parenting struggles. Parenting is very difficult. You know, maybe it's personal struggles. Maybe you're dealing with grief and loss. Maybe your heart's broken and, and you're trying to make it through and you're just carrying this weight around with you. And, and, and these are the things that we can see, right? Like when you look up here and you see me, you see this heavy weight that I'm carrying around. You know, work is hard. Yeah, I work in the hospital um, and we are um, understaffed right now and over, you know, overflowing with people who are sick. And, and so there's this heavy weight that you're carrying around. Can you do the job? Can you be the parent that you're called to be? Can you, can you make the decisions? Can you, can you be the person you're called to be? And these are all very visible very heavy chains that you're carrying around with you. And um, as we carry these heavy weights, as these heavy burdens um, that we shoulder and we carry them, it makes, us hard, it makes it hard for us to run the race for Jesus sometimes because we're, we're trying to hold all of these things up. Um, but also, there are the things that you carry around that no one else can see. They're so heavy. They're, they're hard because the things that you're carrying around, most of the time you don't want to share with someone else, so you don't have an ear to bend. You don't have hands to help because they're really bad and you can't share them with someone else, you feel like. And maybe it is um, anxiety. Maybe you're carrying that anxiety around Maybe you're carrying worry around with you wherever you go. Maybe um, you, you can't rein it in yourself. You, you're trying so hard. But you're carrying this around with you. You're trying to run this race for Jesus and you're carrying this around with you wherever you go. Trying to run this race, trying to do these things for God. And, and nobody can see it, but you've got it there and you take it with you wherever you go. Um, the other things that you're carrying, maybe feelings of inferiority. I carry that around a lot. Oh Lord, let's break my toe. (laughs) Um, Feelings of not good enough, not strong enough, not, not whatever it is that you feel like you need to be, that you're trying to be, that you can't be. Um, And you don't talk to anybody about that because they don't need to know that. And and you don't, you don't share that with anybody. And, and so you're just carrying it around. You're carrying it around in your bag, in your heart. Y'all just real heavy. Okay, here we go. Maybe it's something that you've experienced. I know some of you guys are in the military. Um, Some of you guys are police officers. Some of you people work in the hospital. And all of us have just lived life. So, so the things that you've seen that have affected you, that you just keep to yourself because you don't want to burden anybody else with it. You don't want to lay that weight on somebody else. You don't, you don't want to give them your struggle, your, your trauma. You, you just carry it. You just carry it around with you. Maybe it's the weight of something that you know. Something that you know about somebody else. Something that you know that just haunts you, that hurts you. Something that you know that you just really feel like you can't share with the world. Nobody would understand. And some things, honestly, we're really not supposed to be sharing with the world. Sometimes God puts somebody in our life, in our path, that we can share with. Um, But when we bottle all this up inside, it makes it so difficult. Last one, y'all, I promise. Um, Maybe it's something that happened to you. Maybe it happened as a kid. Maybe maybe it happened as an adult. 
something that you just really feel like you can't share with the rest of the world, things that you've been through. And so instead of running this race like we're supposed to be running it, have you ever seen a cross country runner? What are they carrying? Nothing. They hardly even have clothes on. They're just running. They're running this race for God. They're running this race for God and, and they don't have anything weighing them down. But here we are, the weights that we carry. We just stuff these things back in the bag and, and we carry them and bring them around with us wherever we go and it makes it really heavy and really hard for us to get where God wants us to be because we're carrying all this stuff with us. We're holding on to grudges. Anybody in here holding on to a grudge? You mad at somebody? You mad, bro? You, you holding on to a, a grudge so tight that your knuckles are turning white and it's heavy and it's hard to carry and it's something that God did not design you to carry. We're walking around in chains with extra weight of things for so long that we've forgotten what it feels like to run free or maybe we've never even known. Maybe we don't know what it feels like to run free with God, to let all this stuff go, to trust him in the middle of whatever's going on. We're, max, we're maxing out on our weight, the burdens that we can carry, and that is where anxiety comes from. We're trying to carry all of this stuff. We're trying to hold up everybody else's emotions. We're trying to protect everybody else. And we're carrying these weights around, dragging them around behind us. And we don't even know what it feels like to run free with God. And some people are just putting on a brave, stoic face, stuffing all the stuff, the weights back in the bag, pressing forward, trying to do this all in your own strength. Hebrews 12, one through two says, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run the race with endurance that is set before us. It says lay aside every weight and the sin. You know, when we think about that, we think about the sin. You know, we, we know we need to lay aside the sin. We know there's things that we're not supposed to be doing, and we know we're supposed to lay that stuff aside. But we are also called to lay aside the weight, the things that are weighing us down, the things that are holding us back, the things that are keeping us from God. But how do we do that? Because no matter how, how hard I try to set this down, it's still there. I mean, if something happened to you, it still happened. If you did something that you weren't supposed to do, and that sin just haunts your heart, you still did it, right? So how do we lay that weight aside? Where do we find freedom in Christ how do we do that? It says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus. We have to get our focus in the right spot, first of all. We have to make sure that our eyes are set on Jesus. We have to make sure that as temptation comes and, and as struggle comes and as your, your heart you know, tries to pull you back in the, in the wrong direction, that you've got your eyes fixed on Jesus and not the problem. A few weeks ago, I had a problem and a struggle that was so big, a burden that was so big that I couldn't even bear it on my own. My heart was breaking, my my and my emotions were all over the place because I was struggling and because I was trying to carry this weight. And, and, and I had my eyes fixed on Jesus, though. I fixed my eyes on Jesus and not on the problem. The problem tried to come in and overwhelm my heart. But I kept my focus fixed 
on Jesus. And he is the one who's going to help. He's the one who authors your faith. The reason you have any faith at all is because of Jesus. And he is also the finisher of your faith. This race that you're running, he is in it with you. He is not only just starting something, you know, kind of like our new year. We're not just starting something and then just going to let it trail off. We can, but if we stay in it with Jesus, he's the author, the beginner, and he's the finisher. He's the one who's going to bring us to the place that we are supposed to be. He's the victor. And it says that he despised the shame. He despised the shame of the cross. I heard a couple of messages about despising the shame of the cross. You know, um, it was a criminal's death. It was brutal. It was public. But also, spiritually, if you think on it, and I haven't heard anybody else preach about it, but it just made me think. He took on the sin of the entire world. Can you imagine the shame that he felt? As he hung on that cross, you just think about the shame you feel when you do something that you're not supposed to do. You think about the shame that you feel when you're, when you're struggling with, with making yourself right, trying to make yourself right, trying to get back in good graces, trying to, to make things right again when you've messed things up so badly. We all have. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We all have. Jesus despised that shame. He didn't just... He didn't just dislike it. He despised it. Um, He doesn't want you to carry this stuff around. He went to that cross for you. He took your sin for you. He despised that shame for you so that he could come into your heart, into your life, and bring you back into right relationship with God so that you can run this race that you're running without carrying all of this heavy burden. You know, we're going through Genesis right now in our online Bible study. You know, I invited you to Tuesday prayer night. I want you guys to get involved. But I also want to invite you to our church online Bible study. If you haven't downloaded the church app You go to church at Ministry One in your app store and you can download the app onto your phone and you just click it and you click sermons and and our weekly Bible study is going to pop up and you can go through the Bible with us. We're starting in Genesis right now. Um, So Genesis is where we are and we're learning about Adam and Eve and the shame that came in in the garden. Um, you know, the devil was offering life and death, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The, the two trees that were in the middle of the garden was the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And literally, God offered them life or death, eternal life, or you will surely die. But the enemy, as cunning as he is, and the way that he does, he came in and made the death sound really good. That's what he does. He made the death sound so good that they didn't even want to think about living forever because they were so interested in whatever it was that God was trying to keep from them. He tempted them with what it was that they felt like they couldn't have. And he wanted them to be enticed by that, and they were. Because if you think about it, Adam and Eve are in the middle of the garden where they walk with God every day. If they had really been confused and unsure, they could have asked him. They could have invited God in to that moment. They could have said, Father, come and talk to this snake. What do you think about this? but they weren't interested in that. And how many times have we been in that place? How many times have we been in that place of temptation where we just wanna do it? We wanna do whatever it is that's on our heart, that the the enemy is throwing out there, this little fruit that he's putting in front of you and he's trying to, he's trying to pull you into this place that you're not supposed to be in and, and he's making it sound so good. And as it is, we know that he's a liar, right? So it doesn't matter how good he makes it sound, it's a lie. 
He offered them knowledge and wisdom to be like God. But what did he give them? Their first, their immediate response was shame. He brought in sin, sickness, disease, and he brought in shame. Something that Jesus took to the cross for us. He nailed that to the cross for you. I'm not saying you're not going to feel bad when you do something because this freedom that we find in Christ is not about us just being guilt-free because there, there is a time when God convicts us of our sin so that we can come into right relationship with him. But he did. He offered them life and death, blessing or curses, and they didn't want to know his, to hear his answer. So I'm going to tell you in the middle of this moment, as someone who has had to battle with temptation, um, trying to overcome temptation, just in, you know, we all have things in our lives. The quickest way to make the right decision is to invite God into the middle of that decision. You're scrolling through something on your phone and something pops up. Invite God into the middle of that decision. What you going to do with that? You're struggling in your marriage, your relationship. So-and-so at the office is a lot nicer to you. Invite God into the middle of that situation. What are you going to do with that? You're sitting there with the broccoli or the cake. <laughs> Life, death. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? It's so hard. It's so hard. The struggle is real. Um, but can you, and, and then I think about the garden with, with Adam and Eve, and they're in the middle of this situation, and there they are with all their cards laid on the table, and they've messed everything up. And, um, and so they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Well, their initial response is like, Okay, we got to cover this up. <laughs> here's all this shame. Here, here's all this stuff that we did. Um, we need to cover this up. That's their initial response. Let's cover it up. Let's cover it up. Let's hide. Let's cover it up and hide from God. Can you imagine? I just, I just think about the first, this is probably their first fight because this is right after the fall. They've made the mistake. They're struggling in shame. We've got Adam and Eve in the garden no clothes on, trying to figure out what to do because all of a sudden they know and they're trying to sew some fig leaves together real fast and they're trying to cover up their shame, you know, and, and they don't have needle and thread. They don't have a sewing machine. They're probably trying to tie some leaves together and, and probably fighting. What have we done? Oh my gosh, how did we end up here? Woman, you tempted me. The devil made me do it. You know, like all the things, all the things that they're going through in this moment when they're all of a sudden having to deal with this shame that they were never made to deal with. They chose to do what God asked them not to do, and then the shame was the byproduct. And so their initial response is, let's, let's cover it up. Let's hide. It's a feeble attempt. It's insufficient just because you don't want to look at it. You know, you're carrying these heavy weights around, like I talked about. You're carrying all these things around, and, and you're struggling, but you don't want anybody to know, so you try to just try to hide it. You try to cover it up. Um, but Jesus took that to the cross for you. Whatever it is you did, whatever it is you struggle with. You know, it'd be real nice sometimes. I don't know, I'm kind of old, but you guys remember like Men in Black when they saw something that they shouldn't have seen and they would just like flash the light in front of them and all of a sudden their memory was just gone from that moment. Like that's just gone. We don't have to think about that anymore. It's just over, it's gone, it's done with. Um, but there comes a time in your maturity when you realize that you got to be thankful for the scars that they've made you who you are, that, that you're more than you ever thought you could be in Christ, 
Maybe you're in the middle of the wound right now, and so it's not the time when you're thinking about how you're going to feel when you're healed. But, but in the middle of the process, it's really difficult. But I'm thankful for the things I've been through. I'm thankful for them. Not like Brother Mark said. I'm not thankful because of them, but in them. Thankful to God. Thankful to God who can show me how powerful he is in the middle of a situation. Um, we have to change our viewpoint on how we look at these things. Because like I said, we're carrying these heavy burdens around. But we got to start looking at them differently when we lay them at the cross of Christ. We got to stop just trying to cover everything up and hide and shame. Um, but to know who our God is. You know, I work in the hospital one time and I just overheard a conversation um, from a wound care nurse. And she's like, do you just cover that up because you don't want to look at it? And I'm thinking, and I looked and I was like, oh yeah, I would too. <laughs> you know, like, like some things that we go through in life are really kind of gnarly and nasty and difficult and hard. And, and it just make your heart feel better just not to look at it anymore, right? Just to cover it up so that you don't have to see. But that's weak and that's insufficient. It's not good enough. That is a, that is a weak, insufficient way to handle something when you've got a God who is more than enough who's ready to turn your scars into your testimony. And I'm not saying you got to get up on the stage and proclaim to the world every mistake you ever made. We would probably all be mortified and horrified and all the things, you know, but there's a time and a place when God's going to ask you. And always we can take it to the cross. And it should be part of our testimony. So I'm going to ask you again, who wants to lose a little weight with me this year? Anybody? Come on, I better see some more hands than that. I need some truth in this room. I don't want you guys holding on to stuff. I don't want things weighing you down. I want you to be able to run this race with Jesus. Remember the scripture that we got up on the board. Um, for the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. When I was learning about this scripture, when I was looking it up, when I was studying it, um, the emphasis in the Greek is on the word there. So I put the little marker there on the picture for you. So if you read it like that, for the Lord is the spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. The location, the place the freedom that you seek from all these heavy weights, from anxiety, from fear, from grief and loss. For the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the freedom. It's not like the freedom's just chasing him around. He is the freedom. He is the freedom. The Holy Spirit is the freedom that you are seeking it doesn't mean you won't have gone through things. It doesn't mean they're not still there. It just means you're not handling it with a weak and poor way of, of dealing with what it is that you've been through. That brave, stoic face that people put on so that no one knows what they've been through because they don't want to burden anybody with their trials or their troubles or their, their drama. Um, it's weak. We have got a God who is more than enough. Jesus took your sin to the cross. And he took your heavy burdens. And he took your shame. And he took the weight of what it is that you're going through to the cross. And remember what I said about unforgiveness. White knuckling that unforgiveness and not willing to let it go. He died so you could be free from that as well. He said, if you won't forgive other people, how am I supposed to forgive you? We need Jesus' forgiveness. I don't know about anybody else in this room, but for myself, I need Jesus' forgiveness. We can't control every situation that happens around us. We will wear ourselves out trying to do that. We'll hurt ourselves 
burden ourselves, hold ourselves back from the plan that God has for us if we are trying to carry all these things on our own and we're not offering them to God. So the answer and the solution is we have to let Jesus in. You know, we can know that, but it's a totally different thing. How many, how many years have you been coming to church? How many years have you known that and you haven't done it? The answer, the solution is to let Jesus in. We need to let the Holy Spirit in. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the power of God to lead us and guide us and direct us. God is three parts. He is Father, He is Son, and He is Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the infilling of the Holy Spirit. When we ask Jesus to come into our hearts, we get the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. But we can also have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we can be full of the Holy Spirit, and we can walk in the Spirit, and we can lean on God. We can lean on Him in the middle of our hardest and darkest moments when we're trying to kind of flesh this out and work through our situations and find our way to trusting God. I was listening to a message by Craig Rochelle the other day, and it said, if you're feeling weak or trapped or in bondage, remind yourself. It's kind of like a declaration. Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If freedom's what you're seeking today, you know where to find it. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. It's not about having enough grit. It's not about never flinching. It's not about stone cold and not acknowledging your pain or even having enough brute strength to be able to try to run this race while you carry all the burdens and the heavy chains tied up, weighed down, trying to run a race that's impossible to run when you're carrying all this stuff with you. Shutting things down, finding things to numb your pain because you hurt so badly that you don't want to feel the hurt anymore because it's just too hard. Those are weak little fig leaves that mask the shame and the pain and they leave the festering wound hiding underneath. Any good mama, grandma will tell you you need to take the Band-Aid off of that and you need to let it air out, right? We need to let Jesus in. We need to let the light shine in the middle of our situation. We need to stop hiding in the dark. Jesus forgives and he loves, and he will take away even the most broken parts. He can take even the most broken parts of your life. I have seen him do it in my own life. I have seen him that in the middle of my situation, in the middle of, of things that I don't even know what to do with, they're so difficult and hard. I have seen him come in, and in one day, and in one breath, and in one moment, he just handled it. Everything that I was afraid of, working myself up about, anxiety, fear coming on, I turned it over to God. I trust Him in the middle of it. It doesn't mean I don't still feel it, though, because it's still there. But when, you, but when you take the stuff off, you stop trying to hide, and you let Jesus in, then comes the healing. And then, when you're in the place of healing then comes the freedom. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the freedom. Why aren't people getting filled with the Holy Spirit? Are you scared? It can be a little scary. I don't know. You know, we believe in the Holy Spirit. We believe in being filled with the Spirit and the evidence of speaking in tongues. And people are like, whoa, wait a minute. No, I just came to hear a little message about getting saved. Um but you've been saved 12 times. Okay, that's good. <laughs> I'm glad you're saved. That's the very most important part. You can get into heaven without being filled with the Holy Spirit. You can. Um, but how much better will your life be when, when you are walking in the fullness of what God has for you? When you're walking in the fullness of what God has for you. So when the blinders are off, 
and there's no more hiding behind the fig leaves. Jesus paid our price. Our former shame has now become our testimony. Let his glory shine so bright in you that you are a reflection of him. When people look at you, do they see Jesus? Think about that. If somebody looks at you, do they see Jesus? Are you reflecting him in your character? Are you reflecting him in your actions? Are you reflecting him in, in the way that you do things, in the way that you speak, in the, in the advice that you give, in the love that you give? Are you reflecting Jesus? You know, when Moses came down off the mountain, he had so much of God's glory on him that, that he was so bright and shiny that they had to cover him up because they couldn't stand to look at him because the glory of God was so bright on him. Well, that veil has been torn, and it is time for us to let the glory shine. We need to let Jesus shine in and through us in our parenting, in our grandparenting, in our love for one another. Um, we need to be letting Jesus shine. So one last time, I want you to think on it. Um, I, want you to, I want you to just open your heart to the fact that um, Jesus wants you to be free. He wants you to lose your weight. He wants you to turn your heart toward him. He wants to help you through your grief. He wants to help you through your anxiety. He wants to help you through your mistakes, through your past hurts. Every single thing that you've been through, Jesus wants to help you. He wants to help you. We got to change. I'm sad and broken to I serve a God who heals and restores. It doesn't mean we're not sad. It doesn't mean we're not broken. But I serve a God who heals and restores. What about I'm not enough? I feel that a lot of times. I serve a God who is more than enough. I don't have to be enough. I'm never going to be enough. I serve a God who is more than enough. Will you change your declaration? Will you declare that you walk in freedom because you have the Spirit of the Lord on the inside of you? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the freedom. Every chain needs to fall. Every single one of them. Every fear needs to bow. Here and now, Jesus changes everything. The altars are fixing to be open. We're going to have time to pray and praise God one more time. Because I feel like sometimes when we've finished hearing the message is when our hearts are the most open to God. And I've got all these worshipers up here on the stage, but I need to know, where are my worshipers out here? You've been listening to this message today, and you know what it is that you're going through. You know what it is that you're holding on to. You know what it is that you need to let go of. You know the parts that you're hiding, where you need Jesus to come in. You know the weak little fig leaves. You know. I don't have to know all that. I'm not looking to know all that. God knows all that. He already knows. You're not hiding anything from him. The altars are open. I want to pray for you. I want you to open your heart to God today. I want you to let some stuff go today. I want you to trust him and I want you to let him in. Will you come and pray with me? I'd love for you to come to the front. I want to pray with you. If you feel like this word is just burning on your heart, you need to let some stuff go. Um, I heard a story about an 84-year-old woman who was in a church service who, um, who heard about the chains being broken, the hidden ones, the heavy weights, the burdens. 84 years she carried it around with her, something that happened to her when she was a little girl. 84 years she waited. Don't 
don't wait 84 years. I want to offer you opportunity to come and pray. If you're sick, if you're hurt, if you're broken, what about if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, like officially, but you want to? The altars are open. You guys, come on. Come on, sing that again. Father God, we thank you, like Hunter said, that as we walk this year out, that these chains are being broken, that as we walk this year out, the chains are falling, the fear is going to bow its knee to Jesus, and I just pray that you leave this word on everybody's heart as they walk out of here today that we not walk away the same as we came in, but that we walk out different, stronger in Christ. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you for church. Thank you for church, Father God. There's no other place I'd rather be than here with these believers. I pray, Father God, over their week, over their month, over their year, in the mighty name of Jesus. You guys be blessed. I pray the service blessed you today. I love you and I care about you and I'm glad you came to church. I'm glad you're watching online. I missed you if you weren't here. You guys be blessed and have a really great day. In Jesus' name.